Welcome to a Soldier's Note channel. Before continuing to watch this video, don't forget to press the subscribe button, activate notifications, like, and share with your friends. Thank you. The Ultra Heavy Lift Amphibious Connector UHAC, begins to rotate on the beach, July 9, at Marine Corps Training Area Bellows on Oahu, Hawaii during a Marine Corps Advanced Warfighting Experiment. The AWE is the culmination of a decade of progressive experimentation conducted by the Marine Corps Warfighting Lab MCWL, where they are testing potential future technologies, solutions, and concepts to future Marine Air Ground Task Force challenges. The AWE is taking part during the Rim of the Pacific RIMPAC Exercise 2014. Lieutenant Colonel Don Gordon, the current technology officer at MCWL, said the UHAC is one of those experimental technologies that displays a possible capability of being able to insert Marines in areas where current technology wouldn't be able to insert them based on current systems that are fielded. The UHAC prototype is a ship-to-shore connector and is half the size of the intended machine. Currently, the UHAC travels at four knots using a track system with flotation-like pads that propel itself through different terrain. According to an article by by Lance Corporal Eric Estrada published on March 18, 2014, Members of the Marine Corps Warfighting Lab arrived here to test a model version of the Ultra Heavy Lift Amphibious Connector UHAC, on March 3. The UHAC is an amphibious craft that has three times the lift capacity and greater coastal access than the Landing Craft Air Cushion LCAC. When U.S. Marines assaulted Pacific Island strongholds during the last years of World War II, they relied on amphibious tractors capable of swimming with their tank treads. Today, the U.S. military has begun testing inflatable tank treads to carry supplies from ship to shore during disaster relief operations. The inflatable tank-like treads of the Captive Air Amphibious Transporter CAAT, can separate into flat panels to push on the water like a paddleboat. That enables the CAAT to not only swim but also to crawl across sandy beaches, mud, ice fields, and even sea walls making it ideal for delivering cargo or troops in harsh conditions following a mega-disaster such as an earthquake or tsunami. The CAAT works very much like a tank, with moving tracks that are driven by a sprocket or drive wheel, said Scott Littlefield, program manager for the U.S. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency DARPA. However, unlike the metal treads on a tank, the CAAT has large buoyant treads that are either inflated with air or filled with a lightweight foam. DARPA teamed up with the Office of Naval Research to make the CAAT as part of a project to aid disaster relief operations. The same effort has also led to flying robots that use parasails to deliver cargo from ship to shore. Pentagon floats parachuting robots for disaster relief. The CAAT's inflatable treads help the vehicle, each weighing thousands of pounds, float on water. They also work like tires on land to spread the weight of the vehicle to just two pounds per square inch of pressure, Littlefield told Innovation News Daily. Tests with a small-scale prototype of the vehicle have shown how it can drive right up onto land from water, as well as travel across beaches and mud. The CAAT has also successfully climbed over a one-foot wall to go from water to the deck of a barge. Just as importantly, the CAAT consists of parts that can be taken apart and stored inside of standard cargo containers, the same ship containers that carry everything from TVs to iPads across the world's oceans. That enables regular cargo ships to act as mobile bases for delivering humanitarian supplies during the worst disasters, rather than requiring specialized U.S. Navy ships.
The CAAT is a versatile technology that can be scaled to accomplish a variety of amphibious missions, including the delivery of personnel, rolling stock, general cargo, and enable petroleum delivery, Littlefield said. DARPA has wrapped up its work on the amphibious vehicle, but the Office of Naval Research continues to consider whether the inflatable technology can also work for the Navy or Marine Corps. The U.S. Marines currently rely upon hovercraft and a tracked amphibious assault vehicle for beach assaults or landing operations. A groundbreaking tank has been developed by DARPA to walk on water, bringing urgently required food, water, and medical relief to the victims of natural and man-made disasters. Recently released video footage shows an amphibious delivery vehicle designed to deliver supplies in bulk seamlessly, and in some style, across water and land the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency DARPA, has released video footage of its groundbreaking new amphibious delivery vehicle designed to deliver supplies in bulk seamlessly over either water or land. The one-fifth scale demonstrator of the Captive Air Amphibious Transporter CAAT, can carry standard ship containers across even debris-strewn surfaces and waterways using tank line treads with elongated rectangular segments. In the right conditions, it could also tow a raft carrying further cargo behind it in a single delivery. The footage shows the four-ton vehicle making light work of speedily navigating a harbor, setting off from a sandy beach, steaming along at sea so fast it leaves a high wake, skimming over a swamp, climbing a steep jetty, and navigating wreckage as if it were not there. Following natural disasters such as earthquakes and tsunamis, dockside infrastructure is often destroyed, waterways become dangerously clogged with the flotsam and the sea level can be dramatically affected, so normal shipping methods cannot be used. CAAT uses air-filled pontoons incorporated into the tread to keep it afloat and propel it over water and land, navigating even debris-strewn surfaces. Using CAAT would enable a container ship, which can carry 100,000 tons of supplies, to anchor at a safe distance and transfer standard 20-foot containers to shore without the need to unpack them for transport. The Marine Corps Warfighting Laboratory is using the CAAT's air-filled track system in its ultra-heavy lift amphibious connector UHAC concept. The objective is to develop a new amphibious connector to transport U.S. Marine Corps vehicles from ship to shore in heavier loads and overshore obstacles. A half-scale demonstrator was used during RIMPAC then paddled to shore. The demonstrator was 42 feet 13 meters long, 26 feet 8 meters wide, 17 feet 5 meters high, weighed 38 tons, and traveled at 4 to 5 knots on water. The hull was made of aluminum, with a small pilot house mounted on the bow. Using track feet fitted with dense air impregnated foam blocks make it buoyant in the water and propel it on land, allowing it to traverse through mud, sand, and marshland when ashore. This made the demonstrator's ground pressure about 1 psi, compared to 9.7 psi for the amphibious assault vehicle. Compared to the LCAC, the UHAC is planned to have a heavier payload of 150 tons standard to 190 tons overload compared to 65 tons, a longer range of 200 nanometers 230 miles, 370 kilometers compared to 86 nmi 99 miles, 159 kilometers has the advantage of using its tracks to move inland from the beach and over 10 feet 3.0 meters sea walls and is estimated to cost less than half as much to build and maintain per unit. The LCAC has a faster water speed of over 30 knots compared to 20 knots for the UHAC, and a smaller area of 1,800 SQFT 170 square meters compared to 2,500 SQFT 230 square meters. The UHAC would be faster on the water than the AAV and could even transport them to get closer to shore or carry up to three M1 Abrams tanks. A production version would be survivable with a lower profile, armor, and armament. The concept for the UHAC began in 2008 with the goal to design an amphibious vehicle with low PSI. The Office of Naval Research accepted the design from Navitech Inc., and three prototypes have been constructed since, a one-fifth scale model, a one-quarter scale model, and the half-scale model. Currently, the UHAC effort is a collaborative effort between the USONR and the
As Isaac soaks the Gulf Coast, emergency responders aren't just thinking about how to deal with the storm itself, but also its aftermath. As has been seen time and time again, infrastructure damage and persistent flooding often cause more problems than the initial hit of a severe weather event. To address this issue, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency DARPA, has developed several experimental technologies to help with disaster relief efforts. Along with parafoil-style unmanned aerial delivery vehicles, motion-stabilized cranes and self-powered core support modules that fit into standard shipping containers, the agency has built a prototype for a cargo delivery vehicle that can literally walk, or ride, on water. The Captive Air Amphibious Transporter CAAT, moves using a tank tread type system that is fitted with a series of air-filled pontoons that create buoyancy and distribute the weight of the vehicle, allowing it to float on top of water or swamps while retaining the ability to drive on solid ground. The existing CAAT demonstration vehicle is just one-fifth scale, and DARPA has no plans to produce a full-size model, citing cost constraints. However, the technology behind it is available to military and commercial outlets interested in developing it further. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave your comments. See you in the next video.